chances are you have already heard about Starfield and like myself as well as many other players you cannot wait for the release later this year but for whatever reason if you've never heard of Starfield before here are nine reasons why you should be hyped and number one the sheer scale of this game it is honestly unbelievable now with it is going to come with a hefty download right at the beginning of around about 120 130 gigs but that is to be expected especially considering that there are over a hundred systems and over a thousand planets with each of these planets not just being a skybox but also for you to be able to land on them now how this is done is through procedural generation each planet in itself will have its own rule set resources various events that will happen and will start off with a single tile but the second that you get close to it ready for landing the game will generate the whole planet but for most people they would believe that this is going to be a downside if it's procedural generation there really isn't too much control of what's going on but there will still be a lot of handcrafted content within here that will provide the experience that you're looking for allowing the game to have quantity as well as quality and number two we have to talk about exploration as mentioned with there being over a thousand planets and with each of these planets you are able to land on them you will have loads to explore what's really interesting though is because it's all based with this procedural generation system no single planet will ever be the same and i'm not just talking about the 1000 planets that you'll have access to whilst playing i'm talking about everyone there will be the rule set that will be available so if there is a planet which is made up of hazardous material whenever anyone goes over there of course there will be that hazardous material but it will be laid out in a way and presented in a way which is completely different for every single player it's no longer the case of there being youtube tutorials and walkthroughs and playthroughs saying exactly what's going to happen in this exact location at this exact time because it will all be different there will be guides and as likely we will post guides here on this channel which tell you that certain planets have certain resources but that's as much as we can give we can't tell you the exact location because it will always be different and that ultimately means that for a lot of it you need to explore for yourself but that's not a bad thing that's only a positive positive. and number three we need to talk about character customization this is essential within any role-playing game people want to visualize themselves in a certain way they want to have a specific type of character and this in itself is nothing new the character customization system will go over absolutely everything that you would expect but there's one thing that stands out among the rest and that is that every other character within the game every npc is built using the exact same system and this stood out to me and it will likely stand out to you guys as well how many times have you gone into a game you're able to customize your own character and you want them to look a certain way i've had this before when playing through red dead redemption i wanted my character to look like dutch or arthur but i just could not get it right that won't be the problem within starfield because everyone is built using this exact same system it does mean that with the character creation you can recreate them and get them looking exactly like other npcs and other characters within the game of course this may look a bit weird within some of the cinematics and cutscenes, as there will be two of the exact same and it may be a bit tricky to tell them apart but if you want to do that you can do that and then with the character creator you're then able to go and select your own skills and abilities through the backgrounds that are available and on top of that you're then able to set your traits this already just starting out the game and customizing your character within the first minute or two you will be on your way to have a completely different playthrough yet again to other players as well as potentially yourself when you go back through and play again unlocking completely different content every single time and number four we need to talk about ship customization this is another big one because it's not just a case of you buying a ship and flying out into space and it's also not the case of you going through various ship presets and just changing the color of them every component as part of that ship is customizable you're able to take the cockpit and have that up in front but what you attach to it is entirely up to you and can be placed in any order 
Of course, there's limitations. There's a certain size where you can't go any further than. And of course, with this, we should highlight that there are stats associated with every single component and module that you end up adding or subtracting. So that does mean, depending what you have, would either provide a well-balanced ship or something which is completely out of use, something that's not really going to function well within the game. You need to find a balance with these so that you're not overloaded in one area and ultimately just don't have anything that's good enough to fly out into space and fight off the numerous amount of enemies. But it still gives you the option to be creative. Already just from the gameplay and trailers that have been released, we've seen a variety of different ships, some being absolutely crazy and they're still available within it. You're still able to go and use them. So it will be interesting to see what people are able to come up with. And it wouldn't surprise me if there were guides by the time Starfield is released, highlighting some of the best builds that you can put together with the ships and the various components that you have within game because this in itself can be very interesting. And number five, we need to talk about combat. This is both within space as well as on land. What's interesting about this is how it will evolve based of where you are. It's no longer just a case of there's a shooting mechanic available and that will be the same on every single planet in every single location because it won't. And this is also kind of linking into what we just talked about. With your ship customization, of course, depending on how you build your ship and the stats that it represents will depend on how that ship performs in combat. You may have a lot of weaponry, but you might not have top speed and the ability to turn around quite quickly. That in itself already means that you need to adapt your playstyle. But when it comes to land, when you're fighting, each planet has a different gravitational pull. For some, you're able to jump and it's more or less like there's nothing there. You're more or less flying in a way. But depending on the weapon that you have, if you were to shoot in that climate, it will gradually push you back. On the other hand, there may be a much larger planet with a stronger gravitational pull where it's extremely hard to jump, but also the pressure within the air, it can really take it out of your character, meaning that you're going to be a lot more sluggish. Your ability to move around as quickly as what you were able to do on other planets just is not the same. So no matter what you do, the combat, yet again, like most things, will always be different. One strategy that you have to take out one outpost might not be the same for another. And this is already a massive variable in play on top of being able to use different types of weapons and unlocking various different types of skills that will improve the combat in some way. And number six, we need to talk about outposts. Outposts are very special. Remember how we talked about earlier that there's over a thousand planets in this game? Well, with every single one of those planets, you're able to build an outpost. This outpost can either be a home or it could be a place where you gather resources. You can even leave a crew there so if you set up a manufacturing pipeline that they can carry on doing what they need to do whilst you fly off, continue with the progression of the story, do what you need to do, come back, gather those resources so that you can go off and do, yet again, whatever it is you want to do. And for my personal playstyle, I really like the idea of being able to set up an outpost on as many different planets as possible, just gathering as many resources as possible. Pretty much just dominating the universe as the richest, most valuable person that could possibly live. But just like what we were talking about with your spaceship, with these outposts, yet again, they are fully customizable. You can place whatever modules and structures you want and the only thing holding you back is a build limit but this build limit is still fairly high you can build some incredible structures and have some crazy homes warehouses manufacturing plants whatever it may be that you want to create without that build limit getting in the way and number seven we need to talk about the development the name Starfield was trademarked back in 2013, so we know that the initial idea was implemented at that first moment. But pre-production started sometime before that and then production started sometime after. Either way, an incredibly long time has gone into this. And there's been loads of quotes and comments talking about how Bethesda have wanted to do this for years, way before they even put in the trademark for the name. So it's fair to say that a lot of thought and a lot of time has gone into this. 
What's really interesting with this whole development is over the last year, originally Starfield was set to release in November of 2022. It was then delayed and pushed to the beginning of 2023 and then delayed again to the 6th of September, which is the current release date at the time of this video. And even though it's disappointing with these delays, what's real nice to hear is that they haven't added any new mechanics. This means with these delays, it has just been about working through the bugs, getting through all of the glitches and errors with the game, cleaning them up, polishing the game, making it look better, making it feel better, rather than adding any new mechanics. And Bethesda themselves have said that this is the title with the fewest bugs that they're ever going to ship. And that was if they were going to ship it at that exact moment. We still have 70 days going until this game is released. And in that time, I imagine they're going to get rid of even more. And number eight, we need to talk about the replayability. This is something that has already been mentioned quite a few times. The differences with the different planets, the exploration, character customization, ship customization, and even outpost customization. There is a lot there, each being different every single time. But this really is just the beginning. We can take a look at dialogue and it being four times larger than what we had within Skyrim. All of this put together brings endless possibilities, loads of different choices allowing you to have endless possibilities and you shaping your character the way that you want to shape them. Of course, there is a story involved, but how that story ends really comes down to the choices that you make. And at number nine, we must talk about modding as well as DLC. Bethesda have already confirmed that they plan to expand Starfield, not with a multiplayer or anything like that, but with additional skins as well as additional content. It's likely that we will see skins available for you to be able to go and buy into, as well as it's likely anything that has customization connected to it, your character, your ship, outposts, that there will be additional structures and modules that you can add at a later date. All of this coming through DLC. But for whatever reason, if Bethesda were to ditch that plan, we can always rely on modding. Bethesda have said that they're going to support modding. They want to see what people are able to come up with, which means from day one, those that want to start putting together mods to try and improve it in different ways or really just experiment with what's there, they can. And you as a user can include those mods as part of your game and do whatever it is that you want to do, whether it is improving certain aspects of the game or just going absolutely crazy with a chaos mod or something along those lines. This on top of all the replayability options that are already within the game because of everything that is branching customizable just adds another layer to this for it ever evolving within the future. But anyway, here are just nine reasons why you should be hyped for Starfield. And to be honest, there could be a hell of a lot more. Let us know in the comment section down below why you're excited to play Starfield later this September. And if you enjoyed this content and want to stay up to date with everything, then make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. If you enjoyed this video, then I highly recommend clicking the next video on screen. That video has been specifically selected just for you. So click that and I'll be over there to guide you through absolutely everything. I hope you enjoy.